The word prolific doesn't quite do Joyce Carol Oates justice. She has written 50-some novels, volumes of short stories and poetry, and many novellas and nonfiction pieces. I spoke with Oates about her latest project. It's called The Lost Landscape, A Writer's Coming of Age, which explores exactly that. The story of how you grew into the writer and person you are, you read about a lot of pain surrounding you, but two really nurturing parents. Is it harder to write a memoir than it is to write fiction? Well, I wrote the memoir over a period of years. Mm -hmm. I think if I had sat down and tried to compose the memoir like page after page, I think it would have been virtually impossible. It, 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 do you write about this over time because you want people to understand you better, to understand your work better, or just, or just because this is what's in your head? I wanted to sort of see what my roots were since t a lot of time has gone by. So I can look back for decades now and sort of see things that happened when I was a, quite a young girl and my early interest in stories and mysteries of adulthood and so forth. Did you remember more about your youth as you were taking time to write about it? Yes, then? yes. I think, that, I think the act of meditation and throwing one's mind back and so forth it, it brings up memories that are somewhat buried. Is that exciting in a way to rediscover um, <laughs> your youth? I don't I, know if that's the right word, but you know well, what I mean. Well, it's thrilling in a way, but it's also very, very upsetting because virtually everyone in the memoir is gone. Everyone is gone. So I've lost my whole family. The lost landscape means what we're all going to lose eventually. So that was sad. You write, uh, the singular book that changed uh, my life, and I don't think you're alone, was Al Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Yes. Why did that book have such a profound impact on you? I was only nine years old. It was the first really real book that I, that I was given. And I just absolutely memorized it, and I loved it. I identified with Alice, and then I started imitating it and with, with my little crayons and drawings and so forth. So it was at, so at the very beginning of my imaginative life. Do you reread it as an adult? Oh, I look at it all the time and I've taught it. You know, we, you were on the radio with Marjorie Egan and me and we were talking about some of what you encountered as a kid, some of which was pretty painful. And you said something like, we didn't have the words or the language then That's to right. describe things like domestic violence, That's sexual right. assault. That's right. Now that we do, how does that change both the experience and our reaction uh, to the experience? Well, many things come into consciousness in a culture, and things that were buried in inarticulate and in Kuwait are given words. When I look back on my family, I can see now that both my father and my grandfather were basically victims of occupational illnesses. They, my, particularly my grandfather died very young because he was working in a steel foundry and he wasn't protected. He basically died of steel filings in his lungs. I suppose it was lung cancer or from emphysema. Of course, at the time, nobody knew that what people would say was it was, it was his time. Mm -hmm. You know, people were dying very young because mm -hmm. of occupational hazards. You know, speaking of uh, words, you, you're teaching now Princeton and NYU, were those the two yes. places? Yes, yes. Trigger alerts, how do you react <laughs> to that? I haven't any personal experience with that. Nobody has talked to me about trigger alerts. I think it means that you're supposed to alert a student that something catastrophic will happen. If you're teaching Macbeth, I guess. Does that not trouble you, the concept, even if you haven't encountered it yourself? Well, I mean, these are people um, who have to encounter the world a year or two years later, no? I've read arguments on both sides. I tend to believe in freedom of speech and freedom of the press. I really don't want to come down hard on one side or the other. You write faster than I read. I'm not proud of that, but you've written dozens of novels and short stories and essays and things. Is it discipline or is it the speed at which things come into your head? What causes you to be able to be that prolific? I don't suppose I'm any more prolific than many people. Just well, you said, are. You and Stephen King, I think, are um, almost in a class by yourself, well, no? John, John Updike wrote quite yeah. a bit, and people who are nonfiction writers may be writing a good deal. Oh, everyone works to their capacity, I think, and to their, their enjoyment. But do things just come into your head, or do you work at those things? Do you know what I mean? Well, I have the good idea. You have to have a vision, and then you work it out. All the work in the world doesn't add up to a vision. If you don't have an idea, you have to have the idea first, and then the work comes after. You know, I, I, I just met you today, and obviously everybody watching knows what, how prolific you are as an author. When I read how prolific you were as a tweeter, I, it was like an out-of-body experience. What's the allure of Twitter to Joyce Carol Oates? Well, Twitter is very, very interesting. In, in one sense, it's a radical, revolutionary way of, um, of learning about the world. 
I follow about 70 Twitter accounts, and I learn from all of them. And they're, all your tweets are yours, obviously, and they're close to 17,000, no? Um, I don't remember. I do. I look today. Oh. 16,004. That's a huge number. Well, a lot of my tweets are in response to things I'm reading. Uh -huh. You know, I follow people like, for instance, Margaret Atwood or Nicholas Kristof. The ACLU National, I follow ACLU, and I have a lot of response to that. And Black Lives Matter, animal rights. You were critical of John Oliver, <coughs> one of my favorites today, were you not? Well, John Oliver has the right ideas, and his politics are, are fine, but he tends to bathe everything in this this kind of incredulous irony that just makes everything sort of meaningless. Uh, the Lost Landscape. What do you want people to take away from this? Is it just a, a story about you, or is there something more you hope the reader takes home? Well, I hope that my, I would seem exemplary and representative of, a, of somebody more than just myself. So people have been writing to me saying, this happened to me when I was in college, and this happened to me when I was in graduate school. So that's what writers hope for, some sort of resonance with, with a readership. Well, there was resonance here, too. Joyce Carlos, it's a Thank pleasure you. to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. You.